Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Arcade High, back again with the Synthwave series tutorial part 2. Today we'll be looking at uh, EQing drums, kind of sculpting out frequencies to make things kind of fit together just a little bit better, uh, kind of cleaning up the mix, and adding some bass, and we'll also touch on side chaining toward the end. Uh, once again, this is going to be a little bit longer of a tutorial, I want to make sure you guys can kind of follow along step by step, uh, I'll make sure to go over all the bases. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments, and feel free to subscribe. I'm going to try to do these videos weekly, probably releasing them each Sunday if all goes well, and we'll be touching on some more advanced stuff as we go along. Uh, but so here is what we'll be creating today. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna do a little bit of a primer on EQ, just kind of explaining what it is. Um, I feel like most of you guys are gonna know uh, what EQ is, uh, but for some of you out there who don't, um, I just wanna do kind of a quick run through of what it is to kind of get you uh, on the same page for the rest of the tutorial. Uh, this should hopefully help you a little bit to kind of understand what we're doing to the drums as we move forward uh, with these tutorials. So EQ stands for equalization. Um, essentially, it is just equalizing or balancing the frequencies in a sound or a sample. Uh, so what does that mean exactly? So essentially, uh, right here I have an EQ open, channel EQ. This is the one built into Logic. And then on the right here, I have a test oscillator. And what this test oscillator is going to do, it is turned off right now. And when I turn it on, it is going to generate a sine wave, just a pure sine wave, which will resonate at 1000 hertz and that's going to create a tone. So I have this turned down a little bit so it won't blow your ears out, but I'm gonna turn this on, and when I turn this on, you will see over here that it'll be generating a frequency right at 1000 hertz, so right at 1K here, you'll see uh, a bit of a graphic come up here. So let's turn this on, and there you go. You can now see this is generating just a single tone at 1000 hertz. Now if I move this frequency, you'll be able to see on the left the little peak there moving along as I get lower. And as you can hear, the frequency or the pitch becomes lower and lower. That's all we have here is around 200 hertz. We can go all the way down here to the sub, to the bass, and you'll kind of, you'll be able to tell, depending on what you're listening to this tutorial on, you know, if you have a subwoofer, big speakers, or just, you know, iPod headphones, you might not be able to hear anything when I get down to around 50 and 40. Um, these lower frequencies are just kind of more, they're felt rather than heard. And I can go all the way up. Up here, you probably don't hear anything up in this high range here. Um, so that is essentially... Uh, what we're going to be working with. That, that is the basics of frequencies. Uh, I think a lot of people will... Uh, whoops. Uh, I think a lot of people will look at this and think, you know, this seems a little confusing, maybe. Um, this kind of giant graph thing over here of these different numbers and colors and, um, you know, and we'll get into some of the other uh, bell curve stuff a bit later. I think a lot of people kind of overlook this, especially when starting out. Uh, but this is a really super useful tool at any stage of the production. Uh, just think of it from low over here to high in terms of the actual pitch. So certain instruments are gonna have uh, areas where they kind of resonate or have more energy, so to speak, uh, in certain parts of the frequency. All right, so to get started, um, we're gonna go through each of our instruments and add some EQ to kind of clean them up. Uh, and we'll begin with the kick. So when you start out, just, uh, click your kick here and then double tap EQ, double click EQ, and it's going to bring the EQ up, and you're going to want to make sure that your analyzer down here is turned on. Uh, I believe it, it starts on default turned off, um, so if, if it is, make sure it is turned on, and make sure this little button here is on post. So you have pre and post. Make sure it is on post, and this is turned on. And so we'll hit play on our kick. I'll solo it out, and you'll see where the energy of the kick is hitting. Now remember, we have low to high. Alright, so you can see 
kick is generating a lot of low energy down here. Obviously, it's a kick. Uh, you know, it's going to be very kind of bassy sounding. Um, and you can see there's some energy at the top there, but uh, not much. So one of the first things I pretty much always do when I'm when I'm throwing in drums um, is to cut out some of the really low end stuff. Um, it's called adding a low cut or uh, a high pass filter. Um, I find the term high pass filter to be a little bit confusing uh, when starting out uh, because it has the word high in it and actually we're messing with the low frequencies. So uh, I just go with low cut and high cut, cutting the highs, cutting the lows. So we can turn on a low cut by clicking this little thing here and by clicking uh, and dragging this uh, frequency number here, the hertz, we can uh, remove or cut certain frequencies at whatever we determine by the number here. So let's uh, hit play here. And you can already hear it's affecting the sound because we are cutting a lot of that low energy. If I keep going, we can now only hear that, that high click. So what I tend to like to do on pretty much any instrument um, is to cut out some of this really low stuff around 30 hertz. And you can double click this and type in 30. It's a little quicker. Now this second number here, 24 dB per octave, basically just think of that as how steep of a slope uh, are you putting on here? How steep of a cut? So the higher the number, uh, the steeper this cut's gonna be. So I typically like to do around 12 or 18 or so. 12 should be fine for our purposes here to kind of just roll off a little bit of that low kind of wompy thud um, that you kind of would rather feel than hear. Um, and this is really where a lot of new people um, sort of lose um, clarity in their mixes. You know, you'll hear a mix and it sounds kind of muffled or really kind of boomy or just, it just sounds not very clear. Instruments aren't really cutting through. And that's all in the EQ. Uh, so, you know, half of the battle, honestly, when it comes to clarity and mixes, is going through and adding low cuts, cutting out some of that really low end stuff that, you know, you're, you're not going to really hear if you're listening to the kick alone. But once you start adding all these instruments in, that's going to have that low frequency in information. It's going to really build up and it's going to, you know, just really kind of muddy up your mix. Um, so another thing I like to do with kicks is to kind of roll off some of the top end. You do want this click up here, but, uh, you know, sometimes you can kind of roll off a little bit. If you click this little button up here, we get a, a high cut, turn the high cut on and we'll move this over. Uh, we'll do around 15 and then I'm going to, this is too steep of a curve. So I'm going to lower this number to around six. I'm going to turn it off and on, hear how it sounds. So I can hear a little bit of that. Uh, crispiness at the top uh, going away. So I'm going to move this back up just a bit. Yeah, and so I, I still hear it cutting a little bit. But that's okay. You know, we're going to have hi hats uh, and other instruments taking up a lot of space. The kick doesn't really need uh, that much. You know, sometimes I'll even do more. Sometimes I'll even cut upwards of 12 or 18 dB per octave. Um, it's really to taste. Play around with it. You know, go into your EQs. Um, playing around with this stuff, honestly, the best way to learn is to just keep, you know, repetition, just keep doing it over and over again, hearing what certain things do. So we'll move down the line, move on to the hi-hat, open up the EQ, and let's solo that and hear what we have. And by clicking and dragging upward on this left side, I'm kind of moving my view down to see all the, uh, the graphic, the line here. And we can see there's a lot of high energy, obviously. You know, it's a hi-hat. It's going to be much higher in frequency, much higher in pitch. Uh, but this low-end stuff doesn't really need to be here. So if we actually turn our low cut on and move this all the way over, listen to the sound. Uh, you're not going to hear much of a difference. And, you know, if anything, if you kind of heard that, it's just kind of adding clarity to it. It's just kind of cutting out what's not needed in the sound to let that kind of high end shine through, you know, because you're going to have your kick playing through here. And that's what we really want to hear down in this low end, the kick and the bass. Um, so this is really, really, once again, I'm going to kind of hammer this in, really focus on kind of clearing up the low end in your mix um, and kind of getting out some of those low end frequencies to kind of, uh, make some clarity for your mix. 
So we'll keep that there, move on to the snare, listen to that. Once again, we have some low information here that really doesn't need to be here. The main focus here is around 150. So we'll turn our low cut on and move this over. And around 100 should be fine. If I turn this off and on, once again, you'll kind of just hear some clarity come back into the, into the uh, snare. And see, I'm not even hearing a difference here on my headphones. Let's add the kick in. See how they play well together. Cool. And one thing that people like to um, tell everyone is to EQ with everything playing and to not EQ soloed. And they're not wrong. I mean, people aren't going to be hearing things soloed in your mix. They're going to be hearing everything together. So it's great to, to listen to these EQ changes with everything together. But for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, I'm going to be going through and soloing just so you can actually hear uh, kind of what we're doing as we're kind of sculpting and, and adjusting these EQs as we go along. So move to our clap. As you can see, a lot of high end here. Let's cut some of these lows that we don't need. And a great way to kind of do this is, you know, if you kind of pull your frequency over until you hear a difference in the sound and then scale it back. Get just a little bit of that lower 100 range there. Let's check out our toms. Whoops. Let's move our uh, loop over. So once again, let's cut up to around 30. Cool. And we'll give that a little bit less of a steep there. We'll try 18 for this one. All right, and then our crash. Let's move our loop over so we hear just the crash. Again, we'll cut low end. Pretty, pretty good there. And the thing is, with all these EQ cuts, um, especially in the beginning when you're first making your your drums, you know, a lot of people will wait to the end to EQ and everything. I like to kind of throw on some low cuts, uh, do little touch ups as I'm going along. So then later on, like I already kind of have a basis of what I'm going to do. Remember, none of this is permanent. You can always change this. Most of you are probably working. Um, with these songs on your own time, you know, um, at your own pace, you know, there's, take your time, like slow down, enjoy the wine, so to speak. Uh, you know, don't, don't rush it. A lot of people will listen to their favorite artists and wonder how do they get that sound? How do they get that quality? And it's because they took their time. They didn't rush things. You know, patience is key here. Really go through your tracks and ask yourself, is this as clean as I can possibly make it? And if the answer is no, then ask yourself, how can I make it better? So let's check out our clap as the last one. So you can really kind of hear this low end being cut. Here, I'll turn this off and you'll hear it. That kind of, you can really hear it in the reverb and the tail on that. It just kind of clears it up a bit, you know, it leaves room for our, our kick and whatnot. So let's hear everything together. Readjust our loop. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and add some bass. Always the fun part. So I'm going to right-click here. I just uh, created a bass track here, and then I'm going to right-click and create a new media region. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Whoops. I'm going to go ahead and... Somehow my scissors got on my left-click. I'm going to go up here and change it back to pointer tool. 
gonna extend this out and I'm gonna loop this and let's see what instruments we can throw on here now since because I duplicated the big clap it already added the space designer which is the reverb and the EQ um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of both of these for now we can add those later so we're gonna change the instrument let's see what we got here um, we'll try ES2 And let's see what we have in the uh, presets. Funk synth bass. I think there's one that I like to use sometimes. Classic synth bass is not bad. We can start with that one. Let's just start throwing some notes in. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do just a straight kind of four to the floor driving bass by holding option and copying these notes. And once I get four, I can just go ahead and copy all of them by selecting all of them. And let's just hear how that sounds. Cool, okay, it's a little loud. Let's turn that down. Okay, so let's give a little variance. I mean, obviously right now we just have a single C note. Uh, so let's play around with it. We'll just go ahead and keep it in the key of C to keep it simple. Okay, okay, so we're starting to get somewhere now. Um, while I'm here, why don't we go ahead and add some EQ to the bass. Let's see what it looks like. Go ahead and add our low cut and do around 30 or so. And I'll go ahead and keep it on 24 for now. Now for bass, um, I sometimes like to really kind of focus on the high end and making sure that there's not you know, a lot of high end information that's not needed. So let's see what we have here in the high end. I'm gonna smooth this out to about six, and we'll try 12 for starters. Smooth this over. Back down to six here. So one last thing I'm going to touch on is side chaining. Um, this tutorial uh, would typically be done as kind of a moderate, more of a moderate to advanced tutorial, but honestly, it's really not difficult. It's super easy to do. And um, if you guys aren't familiar with it, um, it's only a few steps and you're kind of good to go. Now, side chaining, if you're not familiar, is going to be um, sometimes called ducking. Uh, it's basically that sort of... Um, pumping sound that you're going to hear in a lot of uh, dance tracks, you know, especially Daft Punk and, and a lot of the kind of just um, house music is, you know, uses it all the time, uh, new disco stuff. And even if you're not wanting to use side chaining as say a pumping effect, like a lot of tracks do, uh, it can still be used as a mixing tool. And that's because the reason side chaining is used, it's, it's to allow the kick to come through the other instruments. So for the bass, so to speak, if you kind of listen to the bass and the kick alone, they're kind of just running into each other a bit. You know, if you pull up both the kick and the bass, you can sort of see that they're really kind of playing around the same frequency areas. You know, the kick's gonna be down here, 
so is the bass. And so a really great way of allowing them both to, to play nice together, so to speak, is to do side chaining. So to begin with side chaining, what all you have to do to start out is to create a side chain track. Now, all I typically do is duplicate the kick, Command D, call it side chain, select both of your kicks, hold option and copy them straight down. Now, if you want, you can right click this name and color, rename regions, and then just type in side chain, just so you don't get confused of your kick. And I generally like to also um, color it a certain way so I know it's specifically the side chain. So if you hold option and then C on your keyboard, it's gonna bring up this little cool color palette. You can do this with any track. I like to kind of do side chain as like a kind of a grayish, whatever green, blue color, just so it kind of stands out from the rest. And what we'll do here is we're going to get rid of the EQ because there's no reason for the EQ. You wanna keep your EXS24, uh, but the trick here is you want to click on the stereo input and you go down to bus and we're going to send this out through a bus now basically all this is is it's going to be you're rerouting the audio through um a sort of secondary source before it reaches the speakers if we have stereo out here it all it is is it's sending if i hit play on this track it's sending that kick straight to the speakers you know, you can essentially read this right here as speakers. But if we change this to go through a bus, and I, I, I always use bus 10 as my side chain. If we use bus 10, it's going to create that bus for us. And if you look right here next to it, we see aux 1. And it's aux 1 because it's the first aux track that we've created. And this track will be the secondary source that we're routing our audio through. So bus 10 is the transportation method of that audio and the aux is the actual track that we're sending it through. So let's rename it to sidechain. And then the trick here is that we don't wanna actually hear this kick. We simply want this to be here as a trigger, so to speak, for all of our other instruments to duck out of the way once the kick happens. And because it is a clone, a direct clone of the kick, it will happen as the kick happens. So to do that, all you have to do is on your aux track over here, your sidechain track, you click the stereo out, like I said, stereo out basically being just your speakers here, and put no output. So the sound from here, if I hit play, is gone because the sound is going from EXS24 through the bus and into our sidechain aux and then out to nothing. It's just, it's not being sent out. So it's existing as only a trigger, but the information is still there. If I click this, the MIDI notes are still here, but nothing will be playing. So, now all you have to do is go down to your bass, and let's add a compressor. So, uh, on your plugins here, dynamics, compressor, and stereo. It's going to bring up your compressor. We'll just go ahead with the Platinum Digital for now. Um, a super kind of quick way to adjust these knobs. We won't worry about all these knobs and kind of compressors and stuff until later. But specifically um, with any compressor when I'm side chaining, there's always a few things that I always immediately do. For one, I'm gonna turn off the auto gain here. Uh, secondly, I'm gonna pump the ratio up to about eight one. I'm gonna turn the knee all the way down, the attack all the way down to about one millisecond or so. And then I'll put the release up around noon just for starters. These are gonna be adjusted and change as we go along here but now let's go ahead and play and as you can see what this compressor is doing is it is lowering the volume of the bass but as you can kind of see here this this uh little meter is just kind of bouncing all over the place as the bass goes because we haven't told it to side chain yet and if you haven't already noticed up here we have a little thing called side chain and if you click that Look what we have here, bus 10, that we just created with our ghost kick. If we click bus 10, which is sending out to our side chain track, I'm gonna hit play and I'm gonna turn down this threshold. And as I turn it down, watch what this little meter does here as it plays.
as you can see, it's going along with the kick being lessened in volume when the kick hits to allow that kick to kind of come through. And when the kick's not there, it can shine through, which gives you that kind of bum, 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 bum sound. Okay, so that's pretty much it uh, for this tutorial. In the next one, we'll be adding some synths and uh, we'll be kind of forming the song a bit more, kind of maybe adding a secondary part perhaps, um, kind of moving the song forward and letting it progress and grow and evolve as it goes along. Um, you know, and eventually uh, we'll talk about kind of ways to add energy and to kind of keep that energy and um, to sort of let the song um, organically grow. And I think that's something that um, a lot of people uh, kind of overlook or don't necessarily maybe think about in, in ways that could be helpful. Uh, so thanks again for watching, and um, hopefully this helped a little bit. Feel free to subscribe. Uh, leave any comments or questions down below. Let me know what you guys would like to see. And uh, yeah, see you next time.